Welcome to the Phantom Zone. And now, Torch. Master is my destiny. Yes, and our other John, John Scott. Welcome to a world where Disney Plus exists. And it's a world I'm happy to live in. Yes! <laughs> like, Very much there's, so. There's everything on it. Um, so there's a little bit of comic news. John, you threw some stuff up here earlier. Was there anything specific? Did you want to walk us through it before we get into other stuff? Uh, yeah, I could do that. Uh, so Ahoy Comics is uh, a new uh, comics company that kind of popped up over the last year. Uh, their big book that people will kind of know is uh, Mark Russell's uh, Second Coming, uh, which was originally going to be a DC comic for, I think, Vertigo. Um, it, it's the book about Jesus oh, okay. and superheroes. And DC was like, oh, this is too controversial for us. And uh, canceled, uh, basically canceled the book. Ahoy Comics picked up the book. Uh, they announced like their next wave of titles. Um, not really want to get into the rest of them, but uh, the one book I'm kind of excited for is the other new Mark Russell book. Uh, it's called Billionaire Island, and it's going to be written by Mark Russell. So he wrote Second Coming, The Flintstones, Prez. Uh, uh, he's currently writing Wonder Twins. Uh, and the art's going to be done by Steve Pugh, who uh, collaborated with Mark Russell on the Flintstones. And uh, this book will be coming out in March 2020. Uh, the synopsis of the book is, Welcome to Billionaire Island, where anything goes, if you can afford it. Uh, but the island's ultra-rich inhabitants are about to learn that their ill-gotten gains come at a very high price. Uh Billionaire Island tells the story of Freedom Unlimited, FU Island, a private island created and populated by billionaires hoping to wait it out at the end of the world. But when, but because they are in international waters and not subject to any laws, their haven is a nightmarish police state for anyone on the island who crosses them. In a broader sense, in a broader sense it's a series that asks the question, how do we save the world when all of its resources are partying offshore? It it sounds like it's gonna turn into like Lord of the Flies or uh, what is that other book where people hunt people? Uh, the, the most, most dangerous, dangerous game? game. Yeah, like I feel like it could be most dangerous game, which would be awesome. Uh, I mean, it's Mark Russell CPU, and I th- and Mark Russell is like a guy who at this point is carte blanche to just like write any book, and it's going to be really good. And, and I think like for the most part, Mark Russell kind of hits up. Uh, a political satire tone that you don't really see too many other people doing fairly well in comics right now. And so it's like, yeah, sure. Like, I'd like to see like your idea for this. Go ahead. Uh, Marvel also announced its solic- uh, solicitations for March, uh, along with a bunch of new series. Uh, we've already talked about uh, Fantastic Four X-Men uh, by Chip Zdarsky and the Dodsons. Uh, yeah, and, I, I had a question about that. Is it a new thing that Franklin has black hair? Uh, I, I don't know. Thought he was not, blonde. I think it was like a dirty blonde, so it could have been like back and forth. Uh, yeah, I'm not. I'm not reading uh, any Fantastic Four stuff, so I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but then also along with the Ant Man uh, miniseries by Zeb Wells, we also talked about uh, Wolverine number one will be coming out that month, also, uh, yeah, which is also they, connected to the Dawn of X stuff. Uh, so two other books that they announced are uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier uh, mini will be a five issue uh, by Derek Landy and Fariko Visatini. Uh, Derek Landy previously previously worked on Black Order and Secret Empire Uprising, and Federico Visalini uh, Visatini worked on Absolute Carnage, Miles Morales. Uh, but yeah, when a dynamic attempt of the, on the life or a dramatic attempt on the life of Bucky Barnes re- reunites him with Sam Wilson, the two old friends are plunged in headlong into a race to uncover the new leader of Hydra before a mass casualty event announces the terror group's resurgence to the world. So you know, it's like, hey, we gotta make a Falcon and Winter Soldier uh, mini ongoing whatever before the show comes the- out. Yes, which I was gonna uh, say, it makes a lot of sense. Which I do want to talk about with you guys. What are your thoughts once we get through all the news on that? Uh, stuff. And the other Marvel series that they announced is Gwen Stacy number one, which will be a five issue mini uh, by Chris Gage and Todd Danuk, with covers by Adam Hughes, 
uh, the first Gwen Stacy's Amazing Adventures. Uh, Gwen and Peter may not have met until Amazing Spider-Man number 31, but that does not mean Gwen's life began on that page. Learn the never-before-told origin of Gwen Stacy, top of her class, daughter of the police captain, and her friend Harry Osborn calls her the beauty queen of Standard High. But she's way more than that. Gwen's got a science brain and a nose for trouble and a no quit attitude that always gets her in trouble. Uh, in the early Marvel Universe, that's a recipe for disaster. Do not miss Gwen, Captain Stacy, Harry, and Norman Osborn, Crime Master, Wilson Fisk, Gene DeWolf, and Yuri Watanabe, and even Spider-Man. It's like, hey, you know, okay, uh, one, can we have, like, a Gwen Stacy synopsis for this book and not mention Norman fucking Osborn? Yeah, I guess, like, that's my, like, one of my questions is, like, all right, so this is an origin story. Are what things are we ignoring that are what is not i hope it explains what's canon and not anymore with her because uh, we've gone over it multiple times like the amount of dumb shit that they've done to her character over the years like uh, you know one i'm kind of would uh, like i'm the kind of reader who would totally be into reading a gwen stacy miniseries that's like set in the like her as a teenage girl kind of shit because i i love that kind of stuff um and I understand that the people like Christos Gage. Um, I I don't like him. I feel like he's like the guy that you hire to just like write a story. It's like it's not good and it's not bad. It's just there. And I know people like his story in in the Spider Man video game, but I just thought it was just super boilerplate by the numbers Spider Man book or. But, you know, it's like, it is what it is. So, hopefully it's good, but I, I don't have a whole lot of faith in Chris's Cage. Yeah, well, I can see that. Yep. Uh, IDW announced that they're going to be doing a Jenica miniseries to kind of, like, build up her, like, origin before she became uh, a turtle and part of the main group, which is pretty cool. Um, the creative team for that would be... Uh, Oh my god, I even had it here. Uh, oh, it's a uh, guerrilla creator and Marvel Knights uh, X Men artist, Bram Revel, will write and draw all three issues of the solo title. There we go. Um, I remember Gorilla kind of having a really cool like uh, look to it. Um, but yeah, it's like. Wait, it says the first. I'm looking at the thing you put in the chat. It says the first woman on the team. Wouldn't that technically still be. Okay, I hate to bring it up, but wouldn't that we still be. We, um, I mean, you know. Uh, Venus, yeah, Venus isn't necessarily canon. Like none okay. of the next, none of the next mutation stuff is canon. So, um, I mean, rightly so, but that makes sense. Yeah, there is another female character that they are bringing in that's a mutant, but she's like a lizard person that was in the cartoon. She's been in multiple cartoons. She's like another Link. Um, uh, uh Karai, Mona Lisa. Oh yeah, <laughs> I forgot about uh, her. Mona Lisa's, like, not... Like, Jenica is, like... She's, she's like, fighting with the team. Like, she's, yeah. like, a member of the team. Like, Mona, Mona Lisa Lisa's... was not... Mona Lisa was, like... She's the female turtle, but she's not really, like, on the team. And they only brought her in for, like, one or two episodes. Yep. I don't know. I like the idea of, like, what they're doing with Jenica, so... And she looks awesome, and I like her weapon. And I yeah. like that she's, like... <sighs> Like the opposite of Venus in like every way, which is good. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm like behind on Batman, but I found out through the news that Alfred died. Yeah, so I'm current on it. Wait, and what? It's... Again? Yes. Well, again. So he says. it's off. I, it's hey, like... man, I'm new to comics, but I've been around Batman for a while. <laughs> oh no, yeah. so have I. I'm just like I just I find it funny. That's all. Yeah, it kind of happens like off page. So we don't really know if he's dead. And Bruce implies that he got away. But then we're not really sure if he did. Because King's last issue just came out, I think, last week. Is that the Batman uh, Catwoman it, stuff? It is, it is not his last issue. The, the last issue okay. is December. Okay, so it's like one of the... It's like the last issue of the City of Bane. Yeah. Like, with Bane as, like, the main villain. And then I also heard a, that... Yeah, I also heard that Bane died, which made me very sad. Um, yeah, I like, it's a good, like, the way the book ends, like, do we care, does anybody care if I say what happens? Doesn't Thomas Wayne shoot him? 
Wait, well, basically, like, sorry, what? Yeah, basically, so Thomas Wayne's been working with Bane to, like, break Bruce so he'll never be Batman again. <laughs> and basically, the final issue of this story reveals that, like, Bruce knew all this, and he knew that the only way to beat them is if he made them think he was broken and he could do stuff all, all, all another place. He reteams up with Catwoman, um, and they're kind of in a good place again, and they're together. And basically, all this stuff where Damien gets in all of the other Bat family, and they jump Thomas, and they're beating the shit out of him. And I can't remember. Somebody wants to kill him. At any point when uh, they're beating up Thomas Wayne, does Damien Wayne ever say, fuck you, Grandpa? I think he says something like, you're not my grandfather, to that extent. He was like, you're an old man, and we're not related. It was something, he was like tied up at the time. Yeah, he says something like that. I'm trying to like pull it up here. And then the best part of the book is that basically Batman is like kind of like narrating this whole thing and kind of like says, like, oh, we have to do like all this stuff and like blah, 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 going through his whole plan and then like goes to fight Bane and he's like, you know, no mask. Or Bane says, like, no mask, and Batman goes, like, no mask, and they both take off their mask, and then Batman's, like, no, um, I can't remember, like, he's, like, no help, and takes off his utility belt and his cape and everything, and Bane's, like, fine, and rips the fucking venom tubes out of him, and then it's, like, it goes through, and basically Thomas is, like, it cuts back to Thomas, and he's basically, like, yeah, like, I, like, I let the kids do this, and it turns around and beats the shit out of all of them. Then it cuts back to Batman, and then like Bane goes to like fight, like go to goes to punch him, and Catwoman like throws her whip around his neck, and he's like, "Wait, you said it's like I lied, suck it." And Batman like throws a bunch of batarangs at him, and Catwoman's like, "I told you he was this stupid that he would just take off all his shit if you asked him to." Yeah, and then they have a big fight, and Bruce is about to break Bane's back over his knee, and Thomas (laughs) Thomas shows up and Thomas shows up and shoots Bruce in the gut. And then Bane's like, what the fuck? And then he shoots Bane in the head. Oh. Fuck. Okay, yeah. fair. That's a super fair assumption. Yeah. And he's just like, yeah, with he like he showed up with Ventral because he's just like, oh, I guess this plan didn't work. Because his entire thing is like he does not want Bruce to be Batman. And when he's fighting all the kids, he's like, No, you guys don't understand. I'm the real Batman. He's not the real Batman. Um and like I've been letting you do all this stuff, and it, it's it's like a fairly good way that they like kind of finish everything. I'm just very tired of Thomas Wayne. Yeah, yeah, me too. Do you remember at the end of Court of Owls when they revealed Thomas Wayne Jr. And, oh God! And I, I didn't was, mind that idea. I just they never did anything with it, which is exactly. I was like, yeah. why? I feel like Tom Thomas Wayne is what Thomas Wayne Jr was going to be, but instead, like, Jeff John's like, oh, like, what if we brought in Thomas Wayne? Yeah, I like the original idea of bringing the Flashpoint Batman into this world because, like, he would kind of be like, you don't need to be Batman. Like, if I'm here, you don't need to be Batman. Yeah, he gets jumped by Damien, Tim, Barbara, Huntress, Duke, Batwoman, and what the hell is her name now? Orphan? Orphan. Yeah, and then he beats the shit out of everybody. Spoiler wasn't there? No, she's left the team. Oh, yeah, Huntress is the one that is like, can I just put a, like, a... Yeah, can I just shoot this guy? And they're like... "Eh, like, (laughs) That's why why I love Huntress, by the way. (laughs) You give a shit. I like that. Tim is like, no, and then Damien's like, yeah, of course no, until he says, until he asks for mercy, and then we say no, and then we put a bullet in his spine. And then he stands up, and Huntress shoots it at him, and Thomas just catches it and then jabs it into Tim's chest. <laughs> and he's just like, you people don't fucking get it. I'm the real Batman. I'm the Batman who gives zero fucks. So, like, I get why, like, people would be mad at it, but I think, like, I was not into Tom King's thing on Batman, but I've kind of turned the corner on it. And I get why Thomas is knowing, and I totally get, like, oh, this is what Thomas Wayne Jr. should be. But, yeah, I don't, I still don't get why they got rid of that. I like that idea. Because the Waynes would not name their first son not the father's name. Yeah. So, yeah. Is there any other stories we want to talk about? Uh, that's all the news on my part. Um, do we want to cover anything we've read quickly? Um, I read. 
I know I've read X Men. Oh, I'm just gonna say I, I read X Men Two that came out today and Fallen Angels. Uh, X Men Two is interesting. It continued the Nightcrawler uh, mandate of things are gonna fuck. Except this time it was um, Krakoa got its fuck on. Wait, I gotta go buy this book now. Yeah, I'll just leave it at that. But yeah, I was like, oh, and they do. I like how it's Scott and his two kids on this mission, and they're. I like their banter a lot. And Fallen Angels was much different than I think the cover that they put out um, made it seem to be. Uh, I have not bought my comics for the week because I'm currently uh, broke until payday tomorrow. But <laughs> uh, me too. Uh, I... Oh, go ahead. No, I was gonna say I read the John Carpenter Joker one off. Oh, how was that? It was fine. It was yeah, okay. it's a Joker I mean... story. I buy all his graphic novels and they're really fun to look at. And like, they're super pulpy. That's his thing. He's just really good at like pulp. Except the only thing is with this one off is that it literally felt like a, it literally felt like the Azarello Joker story all over again. I don't Uh, know that. So I'm fair. I'm going to read it. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, The one thing I, the one thing I did want to say is like, you know, it's like, I haven't bought my comics, but the one thing I did hear about fallen angels that, um, that made me like, just like sigh heavily was uh the explanation of laura kenny in that book and her whole deal just being like oh like i want to get you know my own identity other than wolverine i'm like oh that's and, and it's just, like, said in like one line and it's not said in that tone yeah because it's you know the whole thing is that she's a fucking mean, clone <laughs> Well, okay. I feel like the last three years of of X twenty three comics, or you know, you know, Laura comics, along with like all new Wolverine and um, you know uh, the X twenty three series, is just basically it's like her being everything except Wolverine. And like, I I don't know, man. It's just I feel like we just have like pe- like I, she's just I, I, in like I this say, like you need to read it because that's super taken out of context okay because i feel like if that's in, in entirely the case it's just we're we're just like always going back to like this well of like how to define this character when she's already been defined it's like the yeah it's with, more it's, it's the problem with hawkman where like every writer who hops onto Hawkman all of a sudden has to tell like their first story is always like, oh like how do I redefine Hawkman? And that's everyone's first story with Hawkman. Mm-hmm. And I don't want Laura to be that character. In the book, it's more like her, Cable, and Psylocke are kind of having the same issue. Is that there are people who are uncomfortable with peace, and a thing kind of happens, and they connect. And go on this mission kind of together because they're just like they're bo- they have been born and raised in situations where just like sitting and doing nothing and being happy is not something they can do. Like it doesn't feel right to them. Like they need a mission. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I don't know. It was fine. It was the one I was least interested in. Um, I do want to mention I picked up um, Far Sector, which is the Green Lantern Young Animal book. Uh, I really want to read that book. I really dug it. I just finished it before I started. The art is gorgeous, like beyond gorgeous. And it's kind of like a sci-fi, uh, I don't know if I want to say thriller, but it's kind of like, it's not procedural, but it's definitely like she's a cop on a planet where there hasn't been a murder in 500 years and someone was murdered. And no one knows, like this planet doesn't know how to deal with it. And I really like it. I like her character. I like that concept. That sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, yeah. Do you get, do you get the cool. feeling that's uh, within the current DCU, or if it like you have like no indication of like where it's kind of set right now? Um, she says because the reason it's called Far Sector is she's in a area that is in because she says like, oh, there's what like sixteen hundred sectors or thirty six hundred sectors. I might be in the farthest one. Maybe this one doesn't even have a number. Mm-hmm. So she's like so far out. And there's also, like, I don't want to spoil anything if you really want to read it. So, like, there's a couple of other little things about her that are interesting. Okay. But, um, yeah. So, are we ready to talk about Crisis Issues 4 through 6? Let's do it! So, does everybody have their stuff pulled up with 
things? I have the book literally in my lap right now. Yes. As do I. Do you other guys have the link open with uh, the pages? Yes. Uh, yeah. All right. So I think we decided, Ryan, you need a part. So John Scott is the monitor. John Seiler is Psycho Pirate. Uh, Connor, I, you... Can I get that link real fast before we... Yeah, it is uh, it's, in... It's in the Discord. You can just, like, scroll up and you'll find it. It's, uh, it's right above where it says comic, the, the Ninja Turtle girl. Yeah, it's, like, right where all the Craig join, 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 leave, and joins are. Join, 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 join. Yes. Um, Connor, you are Pariah. I am going to be Anti-Monitor who really doesn't get a whole bunch, and I guess I will read Harbinger stuff when it comes Let me up. Let up my laptop just a second. I, I wasn't aware of what we were doing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I thought, I, I didn't, I wasn't aware we were doing radio play. I thought we were just talking about the book. We yeah, are going to I, do both. We're going to read through a couple of scenes, because okay, I think okay. it'll be fun. The pivotal okay. stuff, yeah, totally. It ended yes. up being really fun last time, so we're like, let's just keep doing that. Yes. So I mean, we can, oh, sorry. Uh, does anybody that. in particular want to be Alexander Luther? <laughs> yeah, man, I'll do it. Fuck it, I'll do it. All right. <laughs> uh, let me see. I'm trying to see who else has like decent lines. Because this first issue is a lot of Monitor and Pariah. Um, and then the second so, issue... <laughs> I, so I didn't like read the book last week, so I, I did a big catch-up on... like. The oh, last yeah. issue, Do you want to I, give us your review of the first three? Well, like I, I send you guys like a note, like after reading the first issue, I'm like, oh, like this book is basically the coming of the Galactus, where Pariah is the Silver Surfer and Anti Monitor is Galactus. Except, yeah. except the key, wow. Except the key difference is, is that Silver Surfer is not that Silver Surfer is not this big of a bitch. Yes, I, I mean, okay. it doesn't have great hair. Pariah actually reminds me a lot of Shinji Akari, where it's just like he's like this guy <laughs> who's put upon into the situation that he doesn't really want to be in. And it's like, it's understandable that it's like, he's this guy who's just like, feels helpless who's put onto these planets to basically be like the one to like warn everyone and then the Earth gets destroyed and he's just sent to a, ne a new one. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. See, I always took it that he was uh, he was cursed to watch people die all the time. Yeah. yeah. He's not like a search. He's not working with the anti-monitor. Mm -hmm. yep. I get what you mean. Like, the air's kind of a similar setup. It's funny when, because his name When did that Galactus Pariah... stuff come out? Oh, in like the 50s. Okay. Or, or fixed 60s. Uh, Which issue but... are we on, by the way? Four. 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 But okay. I think it's like really funny that his name is Pariah. And then you clearly have also this other character named Harbinger, where Pri Pariah is the Harbinger. <laughs> is the Harbinger, and the Harbinger is kind of the Pariah. <laughs> I and think I it's on purpose. Okay. Because I was like, oh, this has to just be like them not knowing what the words mean. Yeah. All right. So just to reiterate, so John, you are going to do, there's like a couple pages of Psycho Pirate. I can be Red Tornado in that, and then we well, I'll need... Be, I'll be Psycho Pirate. Yeah, you're Psycho Pirate. Uh, John, you are also young Superman when he comes up, and then John Scott's going to be old Superman. With the mullet. <laughs> and Ryan, <laughs> can you be Flash when he comes up? And Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do Flash. I'm trying hey to guys, of... I'm the fastest man alive. Wow, you do a great Flash. Yeah. If there's yeah, like just, another... yeah, you can just be Flash, where he just goes, wah, wah. Uh, oh, wah. I'm, I'm, I'm so sad. <laughs> I, I got I got fired, and I live with a roommate of the Atom. Wah. I'm too fast to be sad. Yeah, I'm too yeah, fast. I can, somehow, I can somehow pay for this really nice uh, apartment. House. Yeah, it was, this, it was a house. It wasn't even an apartment. It was just like a, this nice... I'm going with a lot from the show. Yeah. yeah. Alright. If we come up with any characters during it, we will. So, issue four, the cover is Harbinger standing over a dead monitor with Pariah kind of, like, cowering in the corner of a circle. Yeah, by the way, like, way to give away your last page spoiler like, on the cover. Literally. Yeah, but Surprise, they were like... Surprise, he's dead. Yeah, Just but in they were case you like, cared. Harbinger is talking about it the entire time. Like, that... Sh sure, but, you know... Uh, mm -hmm. that's just, like, a pet peeve I have about comics sometimes. 
Yes. Um, and then our first couple pages, we get this really, really weird. I really hate it. This conversation between Batgirl and Supergirl. This book weird. Really? Uh, yeah. Okay. So like that's okay. So I sent in like this image later where I'm like reading this issue and I'm just like, man, the women in this comic are written like not well. Uh, but I I will say positive. Like, hey, uh, negative to a positive. Positive. I really like the look of Supergirl in this. Uh, oh, in this her comic like comic. her eighties like look is awesome with the headband. The headband, the hair, like the it's hair so good. Yeah. Even, yeah, you know what? I, can see, I can see them doing some kind of like iteration on this, but obviously with stronger writing in the crossover between Batwoman and Supergirl. Mm-hmm. That could like make not, sense. Like I can see like Batwoman being like, why am I here? Yeah. That makes yeah, sense. Okay. okay, so yeah. So the thing that like really like kind of pissed me off like early, like reading this issue was like the whole entire stuff with Barbara Gordon and her just yeah. being like the her world like, is ending. I feel so worthless. I'm so scared. Like it's easy for you to say like you have powers, and I'm like, who? Who is this character? Because she seems so foreign to the Barbara that I know. And yeah. I was like, and it made me think. I'm like, wait, when did Killing Joke happen? And I looked at the dates, and it's like this like crisis ends March like 1986 two years to the month is the killing joke and i'm like you can already see like the The setup the the setup for barbara gordon like coming into the future and it's like oh god like this character yeah so it's basically she's super whiny and depressed and it is yeah i i think it is like one of the weakest points of the entire story and it's three pages just about which is a lot and sure She's whiny because the world that she knows and all of her friends are going to be swallowed up by this massive light. And I understand that, like, most people will be, like, depressed during something like that. But it's like, she's Barbara Gordon. And it's like, and I feel like it's like, she's, like, the character. It's like, they had to have, like, a character who feels hopeless. And the character they ended up choosing was Barbara Gordon. Because, again, in a couple years, she's not going to be Batgirl anyway, so... Who cares if we like kind of make her worthless? Mm-hmm. So just to move us along, I would say that like do you, I don't know this character that Constantine is talking to. First he off, I was him... surprised Constantine even showed up to begin with. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, like this was uh man, like I don't think he's he contractually was... obligated to drink. I don't at think least it was his debut, but it was like close enough. Yeah. And that's basically our, like, weird kind of cold open to this book, because then we get kind of, like, a title page. And this is where um, I'll read the kind of narration. And then oh, this, Connor... is, uh, this is Mento he's talking to from the Doom Patrol. Oh, oh. shit, really? Oh, yes. That's a weird Mento. conversation. Oh, man. Uh, but yeah, John Constantine actually debuted a year before this. Uh, but yeah, you also see Swamp Thing in, a, in an issue, like, a little bit later. Yeah, I think it's actually in the second one that we're going to read. He's like in a, he has like one line. Um, but you're here. So after I'm done with this part, Connor, you take over for Pariah and then go till we have like the introduction of like those other weird heroes. Yeah, so sounds good. Antimatter sweeps over the world known as Earth One, even as it is finishing its destructive path across Earth Six. After that, only five other remain. Somewhere he laughs a deep and heady laugh, and thus shall the world die. Pariah stares around him, knowing full well what he will see even before it shimmers into view. A moment before he was elsewhere, now he stands on the threshold of a world about to die. It happens again and again, and I, I can do nothing to stem its destructive tide. But why must I witness such horrors? Why? Such a strange world this one is, unlike most of other Earths, a cosmic anomaly. No. Duplicates here are already an impossibility, as all universes were formed at the same time, at the dawn of creation. But still, they have heroes too. A dozen, maybe more, but only three survive. All right, I'd say it's so. There's there's a moment where he said, "No, duplicates here." Where I'm like, Shatner, is that you? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was my best Shatner. And like, so then we see like the introduction of a couple characters that are here for like a page. One second. Uh, yeah, so, um, what is it? King... Just, Bl- just, Volt. Shazam. 
not yeah, Shazam. They're, yeah, they're non they're not Shazam. But there's one character here who will be part of the story, and that is Lady Quark, who basically her husband and her daughter are killed in the oncoming like erasure, and until and she is about to die until Pariah, who then throws on his Lord hood. Volt is the name of the guy, and it's yeah, it's Lord Lee. Volt, uh, Lady, Lady Quark. Quark, and Leanna. Uh. Yeah. I don't think they have, they don't think they say her super parent name. So, yeah. And, uh, yeah. So, Pariah grabs her and he takes her away. She asks to be left there to die and he disappears and then her earth is destroyed, which you know mirrors like, something they've already done in Arrow. You know, it's like the one thing I was like kind of thinking about, like in this, in like while reading this book, was this book like introduces like a lot of characters, like a lot of, like a lot of like female characters. Legacy yeah, it's like characters. the next part is like a, there's and two I, I legacy feel, characters. They're both women. I, and I almost kind of feel like it, it's just like I can't help but like also read this book and just think of like the shit lords online who just talk about uh, diversity in comics. Uh, oh, you mean and, how they have a Spanish woman become Wildcat and a Japanese woman become <laughs> Dr. Light? Exactly! And, I'm just, <laughs> and people are just like, oh, the comics not, didn't used to be this way. And I'm just like reading this comic that came out in 1986. Yeah, before like, any of us here were born. Uh, <laughs> uh, just remember. Close. Yeah, well, it's close to a couple of us. Uh, this book ended a month before I, I was born. But yeah. Yes. Uh, but it's just like I'm just like reading it, and it's just like they like tried. They're like, "Here's a new Wildcat. Here's Lady Quark. She's gonna be part of in, like Rebels. We're gonna have Infinity Inc. spin out of this book. We're gonna have like a new Doctor Light who isn't a rapist. You know, well, he I didn't mean, rape anybody yet, technically. Yeah, he didn't rape anybody <laughs> uh, years later, but you know, got away with it by technicality. Oof. But it's just, but I was just like, man, like this is like a book that like tries to clean up like all the all the different like things of the DCU, while also like at the end of the day, it's like, hey, man, we gotta introduce some new characters. Yeah, exactly. Which is what we come up to like right now, which is the Monitor, um, basically saying like, oh, we're closer to death. Um, if he takes that, he'll have even more power, but there's one chance, my new warrior, and this is where we cut to the angriest Japanese woman on Earth, who then is bestowed with the powers of Dr. Light, and... Uh, she's, like, kind of a badass. Mm-hmm. Oh, she's she taking shit from shit. anyone. Yes. She can fuck people up, and it's great. Yes. And she's also just like, you're all fucking idiots, get out of my face, you suck. She caught- she calls I was kid. about to read uh like her dad talking to Kimio and it was it was it was about to be super bad and I just stopped uh, myself before dude, I came out. Holy shit, she calls her dad out. Yeah. And like, oh your mother left I know I see why mom like, oh fuck. Dude. She calls the, she calls him toads and I'm like, wow. <laughs> yeah. Fucking toad. <laughs> just like uh she's like Okay. Yeah. Uh, we lose Ryan. Us, she leaves <laughs> us speechless. Yeah. Uh, ripping pepperoni. All right. So then we get to like our next thing, which this is kind of the beginning of more stuff that we will read out. So um, we have like a cut to the monitor, and he's talking about like she's been reincarnate, like she's been reincarnated, recreated, harbinger who's at the verge of losing control, and basically like I have to destroy you, monitor. Uh, I can't do anything else. We get a look at Alexander Luther, who is now in his 20s. We kind of see him age up. And basically, he's like, oh, I know what's going to happen. Harbor Wait, did we talk him. about Japan Earth 1? Like, did we talk about that? Yeah, that was the yeah. toad, the whole toad conversation. Oh yeah. my god. Wow, I am. Okay, keep going. Yeah, that's the whole <laughs> creation. Yep. So, and yeah, Alexander's like looking on, and he's like, she's in pain. She does not realize that killing the monitor, she is actually serving his needs. And um, you that her and him have a destiny to fulfill. Uh, right. I didn't bring I didn't bring this up last week, but I really like the look of Harbinger. By the way, oh yes, have you seen what uh, her, the release they did for the shows? Uh, no, no. It's basically yeah, the seen. same thing, except like less. Like it's pants, and she as of now does not have the cowl. Nor is like the s- one bare shoulder showing. Yeah. Uh oh wow! Uh, I just like I'm saw gonna this. drop it in the chat. 
I just saw the link of the update for Mona Lisa, by the way, in uh, in 101 by Sophie Campbell. It's great. This is a great design. Yeah. It's like a salamander. It's really cool. Yeah. Which, by the way, well, and she had like a, a salamander design and the. Yeah, I have it. It's here. It's here in the chat. I, it has like all three of her designs over yeah. the years. Yeah, this is uh, uh, great. Man, I really need to like read uh, yeah. a new team. team. There is, there's Harbinger. Sorry. sorry, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> you really got so off on a turtle tangent. So that is the design they are using for Crisis in the CW. That's like not bad. Like I, I was gonna say like what I really love is the the red helmet with like the the eighties hair coming out the back. Oh yes, I, I wonder if they would do it, but she doesn't have like the actress doesn't have that hair. Yeah. Although she has been named Lila Michaels like since season one of Arrow, so I guess they've been like this was always in the back of their heads. If we don't Just get canceled. Case. Yeah. Yes. We could maybe do Infinite Crisis. Who knows? All right. So, John, this is now you and me. So, we're on page uh, 106. Yeah. 12. Well, it's 106. In that link, it is where Recycle Pirate starts his communication. He's like, he's like, look at him. He doesn't know how he's going to be used by us, does he? Ha ha. I am so excited. I've made the right choice joining forces with you. Silence, Psycho Pirate. Do you wish me to bombard you with every emotion until they destroy you? Cease your prattling and obey my commands. Soon you will have a new world to psychologically reshape. Yet I comprehend your excitement. The Red Tornado, one of the most powerful of the Justice League of America, will soon fight for me. Now, Tornado, now! Which, like, by the way, like, when Red Tornado showed up, I'm like, really? I'm like, okay. <laughs> just, I just want to point out, I'm... I'm looking at Tornado's lines, and I think DC or Bridge Universe has ruined Red Tornado for me. Okay, I was to say, John, or John Scott, can you read Red Tornado's lines in that version uh, once John starts? So, here we go, back into it. Now, Tornado, now. Oh, I, it, it, oh, yeah, I guess psychopath. it's me. Yes. It's like, it's like, hey, a robot, or are you an android? <laughs> or a cyber? Sorry, maybe? that was super funny. I never remember. Where am I, you bitch? <laughs> and you're racist towards a robot. <laughs> you are the psycho pirate. You manipulate emotions. Fuck you. I mean, to be fair, he's like being polite and at least asking. He's like, "Are you an android?" A cyborg? It's like, what do you identify yourself as? Yeah, which is like, <laughs> hey, for 1986, that's like pretty kind. Uh, he's like, I'll tell you, these walking computers. Don't forget. Okay, you know what? Yeah, it takes <laughs> it all back. He was actually just being a real big ass. God damn, he's a dick. <laughs> I tell you these walking. I tell you these walking computers. Don't forget a thing. Ready, ready. Glad to have you on our side. You racist Once more, bitch. Oh. <laughs> Once more, pirate, and you will be replaced with the girl called Phobia. She will more than suffice. Who are you? Why was I brought here? Why am I missing ninety day fiance? <laughs> um, oh, uh, oh it's still me. God damn it. Uh, <laughs> Are you only responsible for the madnesses on Earth? If so, good job. <laughs> More than just your Earth, Android. Now come, we have a universe to destroy. Which, if you haven't watched uh, uh, you know, Justice Abridged, um, go it's do that so now. so fucking funny. <laughs> Ignore me. Why are you still here? <laughs> Ignore me. <laughs> Uh, I would be so it's, proud of us right now. Yeah, it's the only thing I could read. Like, I, it's all I hear from Red Tornado now. <laughs> all right, so from here, we cut to Firestorm and Killer Frost. And again, her crazy. They both have, like, he has crazy ass sleeves, but her outfit is so weird in 80s. She's like an ice princess. And then there's, like, this giant tower. And they see Vandal Savage. And he's okay. like, what the hell's going on? Does everyone here either watch or is caught up with Legends of Tomorrow? The seasons, yeah, it hasn't started again, right? No, I don't do yet. either. So go, go ahead, say whatever. Okay, so there's a part in like this past season where oh yes, Ray Palmer's <laughs> getting tortured by Vandal Savage, but then they hash it out and they're best friends. And I want that Vandal Savage to show up in this scene. <laughs> yeah, it's the same actor from the terrible first season of Legends returns for like one episode and like. I personally requested to be Ray Palmer's torture. And then we got to talking, and I really don't remember why we were fighting at all. And they're playing giant Jenga. 
<laughs> Const- uh, Con- Constantine and um, what's her name? Uh, his actual real life wife. I can't remember her character's name. Oh, oh no, no, no. I know who you're talking about. It's uh, yeah, Lila, uh Dark, Dark, Dark Star. Nor Dark. They Nor like Dark. open the door because they hear him yelling, and they're like, "Oh my god!" And they open the door, and he's yelling because he lost in Jenga to Vandal Savage, and they're just like totally broing it out in the room. That's crazy. Yeah. And Vandal Savage at the end when he leaves, just like I love those legends. <laughs> so yeah that show is awesome just ignore season one yeah 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 shiny knight shows up they're all fighting and then shadow beasts uh show up again but then they form into a giant being that looks like who we will see soon and the the shadow creature starts enveloping the tower we see the forces uh we see the titans we see yeah uh oh. vansel savage is also just like looking out his window with a goblet and just be like, what the fuck is happening on my lawn? Why is shit so fucked right now? Yeah, because I believe he, this is Vandal Savage in the past during Arthurian times. He's the old man from the South Park Game of Thrones parody where he's like, (laughs) get off my lawn! Stop betraying people in my garden. (laughs) (laughs) So yeah, we have Shiny Knight there, we have the the Titans are in a different spot, because basically it's happening throughout the timelines. We have uh, Geoforce and Dr. Polaris with those work, World War II guys. Um, and basically, we're cutting all around. And this is when Dr. Light, the new one, shows up. He's, like, yelling at them. She's like, you idiots. Like, stop doing this. And Starfire's like... You absolute morons! Yeah. She's you like, stupid Cretans! You, she, yeah, she literally says, you stupid Cretans. You don't, un- you don't realize what you're doing. Um, but she's all... But she's, like, speaking Japanese because she's a Japanese yes. woman. And everyone's just like, I don't understand her attacker! <laughs> what is she saying? I'm so scared! <laughs> Which, at least they didn't do the one thing, because the woman who, like, so Starfire is like, oh, it's a woman in Dr. Light's costume. And they're like, well, he's the villain, so she must be. And so they go to attack her. It's like, at least they didn't do the thing with Starfire, which is candid with how she learns new languages. Oh, where she, like, kisses people? Yes, I'm just glad they didn't do that. I mean, they also well, have Katana. Well, Katana. I, mean, I mean, to be fair, they kind of did something, uh, I don't know, equally as bad, where Katana is like there, she's like, no, she's not our enemy! Has everyone forgotten I speak Japanese? Well, yeah, and of course, it's her standing next to Black Lightning because, you know, <laughs> they're it's the like, two diversity characters. Which is funny, like, is like, this is, um, if you've watched The Young Justice Season 3, this chaotic character with Starfire is Halo. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I was like, oh, when I read this, I was like, wow, did they really, like, modernize that character for that show? Uh, yeah, Halo... Okay, like, a lot of things I, I'm not, like, a huge fan about Young Justice, but, like, the one, like, kind of huge plus is the redesign of Halo. I also yeah. think, like, Halo's power set works different in the show than it does in the books. It's... I like how it's explained better. Yeah. The show. But yeah, basically Superman's like, oh, I speak Japanese too because I'm Superman. This is modern Superman, not this is like current day Superman. Yeah, he, still knows, point- he still he still he knows every language on earth. That was his yeah. superpower. Um and then we cut to Themyscira and we see that the Am- the Amazonians are just basically like, We're fucked, we're fu- fuck it, we're just gonna sit here and pray. And Wonder Woman's like, You people goddamn suck. Like, yeah. why can't you help? And this is where we get like all of the craziness, and this is mostly going to be John, uh, Scott, and Connor. So I will uh, um, intro you guys with the little part. So it says, monitor satellite somewhere in space and time. It is happening all too fast. He saps my strength as each universe dies. And through the warriors I sent through space and time fight valiantly. Oh, excuse me. And though the warriors I sent through space and time fight valiantly, all is not yet ready. But with time remains, I cannot surrender. I, Harbinger, the Luther Child, and Pariah are all that stand between. Wait, he comes at last. Perhaps there is still hope. Greetings, Pariah. I have been waiting for your arrival. Line! Connor. Connor's muted. <laughs> you know me? Shit. You know me? <laughs> no, I you. Of course I do. For a very long moves. time now. It's okay. <laughs> Whoopsies. 113 run. Yeah, I yeah, I said I said my line. No, yes, you, you continue to more. the next page. Oh, do I? Oh, fuck. <laughs> Who are you then? And where is this place? 
I've been everywhere, and I've seen, I've never seen anything like this before. You are aboard my home, constructed quite a long time ago, mind the mess, just prior to the day you were cursed. You know about that? Then I, I never die, but I'm brought to disaster after disaster, lured there like iron to some lodestone? I'm cursed to watch millions die all about me. As I said, I know that well. Indeed, I was the one responsible for your survival. You should have died for your sins, and yet, I saw greater good coming from them. What? You're the one who did this to me? You made me suffer the pains of untold millions? I sacrificed much of my own life to see that you lived. You should be grateful, you unselfish prick. Grateful? You're insane! I should kill you for what you've done! A and you're sick? Watching all these people ruthlessly fighting for their very survival? By the gods, the, the demons grow larger, the heroes, those poor heroes, can't possibly defeat them now. Yet they must, if the worlds are to live. They have to protect my machine. Uh, oh, oh, that's you, sorry. That is mine. Yet they must, if the worlds are to live. They have to protect my machines, even at the cost of their lives. Those machines are yours? I, I saw one like it in Atlantis. What is it? With prayer, the salvation of all life. So are we reading this whole part right here? Hey, it's up to you guys how much you want to read. Do you want to read this whole part? Oh, uh, I'll I'll do it. I, I don't All right, I can read I can read this part. I can read monitor stuff. Earth 1 and 2 are set to perish next. Their fates inextric in inextricably linked together. The fury is worse now. First it was the skies growing red, then the storms and weather. Now the comic disturbances which rage across both universes. The universe would split apart at the dawn of time, each world weaker than the whole it was meant to be. The worlds are separated by vibration and time. My machines will bring them together. The power will, is too great. The antimatter sweeps through the universe. It's only a matter of time before it destroys everything. These worlds will die, Monitor. Like all those I've been forced to watch die. Why did you do this to me? What purpose did you have to make me suffer like this? You aren't changing the future. You can't alter the past. So what have you done? The best I am able. For you do not realize how much weaker I become with every passing moment. All my strength is being conserved for the end, but he is able to move quicker than I. But that is always thus with evil, unfettled by morals or restraint. Pariah, do me this favor. Do not harm her until all is made clear. Harm all is not... Oh, sorry. All... No, it's good. Although all is not ready, I cannot delay any longer. Though all is not perfect, I must proceed. Harm who? What are you talking about? Too late, old fool. You? Welcome. I have been waiting for you, Lila. Do what you must. Harbinger, call me Harbinger, you dolt. No. No, no. Please, stop me. Don't let me do this. You saved me. Raised me. I lo, I love. He commands me now, Monitor, and his command is death. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we could pause. So the Monitor dies, prab, cries and bitches, and m m whines for a bit. Um, and basically, we cut through... Priya crying, and we see all of our heroes on Earth 2 as it as that entire universe disintegrates into Earth them. 2 and Earth 1. Yes. And, and that is the end yeah, of issue 4. And I'm, I'm going to call it right now, gut feeling, that's where the crossover is going to end before January comes around. I agree. It's going to end with this moment with all the universes collapsing in on each other. And the So basically, are... the snap, and then Avengers Part 2. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, Oh yeah, it's yeah, a yeah. really good cut point. And yeah, the the betrayal of Harbinger, like of Harbinger, and then not knowing where everything is going to fall. And then my uh, question would be: Is like, is this where Oliver dies? Is this where he doesn't die? Like, no, I, I'm guessing Oliver will replace. Um, I'm guessing we're going to get the scenes of Barry and Supergirl, and then there's going to be some sort of trade off with Barry with uh with Oliver instead. I can see that. Because like, like Barry carries all Barry carries Oliver out or something. I think if anybody, it will be yeah. It could either be Barry. I do think it'd be a better image if it's Supergirl carrying uh, Oliver, because it'll okay. be kind of like a reverse. That's true, but I also could see like because of that relationship, Barry and Oliver. Yeah, it makes more sense being it that way. Yeah, or if it's Diggle <laughs> <laughs> with his or goddamn Diggle. Green Lantern ring. Sorry, Diggle. Yes, John. John. Diggle Stewart or John, yeah, you know what? No, yeah, his uh, his stepdaughter's name was Stewart. Screw that. Yes. 
They are, it's so heavily, like, they're not even being subtle anymore with the fact that he's going to become Green Lantern. Oh, like, wow. all of his suit is now, like, way more green, and there's, like, green light on it. Mm-hmm. And really, they've been uh, hinting at it. it I think in, was it Elseworlds last year? Like, Supergirl even makes his comments like, oh, John, where's your ring? No, that was uh the Barry Allen of Earth-90 was just like, oh, John, I didn't recognize you without your ring. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and they had they had Ernie Hudson guest star as a stepfather who conveniently had the last name of Stuart. Yes. So we're not even trying anymore. All right. So right. issue four, issue five, five Excuse is me. the next yes. one. So um, basically, we open up, and me and Siler will start this, and then we'll hopefully not have to read as much giant soliloquies like that. Yes, please. I would rather. <laughs> I'm also starting to fade quickly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It is done. The first two Prime Universes are gone. But why has my strength not increased? Uh, That's your line, Siler. Uh, I'm sorry. Your, your mic cut out. That's why. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, uh, what about me? You promised me a world I could reshape. My emotions. Controlling powers were going to be strengthened. Silence, psycho pirate. I have questions of my own. The monitor is dead. Yet his energies have not flowed into me. Two universes are gone. Yet I have not received their power. Please tell me what's going on. I can help. Haven't I controlled our two captives? You haven't told me. Why do you need them? You have me. You are rapidly outlasting your welcome here, pirate. Even your powers can be replaced. Both you and the red tornado shall... Sh- shall oh my god. Both you and the red tornado shall serve me. The Flash is the only being capable of traversing dimensions unaided. I could not allow him to be free. Red Tornado has the powers which will allow me to control my new universe. He will be reshaped as my tool. Still, there are three universes remaining. Without the monitor, the destruction is ensured. Now come, Psycho Pirate. There is work to be done. And so from there, we basically go to... Back to monitor ship. Monitor's dead as dirt. Pariah cries some more. Pariah's been playing Death Stranding. (laughs) Pariah's been delivering packages on foot. And Pariah's been crying because rain and sad music. Um, yep. Harbinger is crying, and then we get a post-mortem message from Monitor. It's not Harbinger, it's Lila. Oh, we're, Lila now, yeah. Yeah, well, Harbinger was just, well, not Harbinger, uh, Monitor was just like, surprise, I knew all of this, you good, I get it, it had to happen. But it does mention where it says, my body died, yet my essence lived. Killing me, Lila, released all my energy. Energy would do more than just power the vibrational forks. It was a mad scheme, and it may yet work. Hear me out, for I need you still. So out of his being was a netherverse was created. So it has temporarily absorbed uh, the two prime universes. Yeah, Earth 1 and 2. And then from this, uh, he basically is like, for well, Lila, remember, I love you. And then, you know, they kind of cry, and then Alexander Luther kind of kicks in the door, and he's like, he knew it, he loved you. Who? It's like, it's me. I'm the last survivor of Earth 3, and he's just Hey, uh, it's me, the last survivor of Earth 3. Which, that is not, if you've watched, like, the... I can't, I think it's in Young Justice of Bridge where they do, like, evil Superman. Like, that's what he sounds like. No shit, really? Yes. <laughs> there's an no, actual, like, yeah, he's like a mob boss Goomba. I love that. <laughs> that's how Ultraman talks in, uh... Oh, yeah, that's Justice what I mean, yeah. yeah okay, okay, well, so it's actually in the uh, real movie, right? Yeah, it's in the movie. He has like a, he's like a mobster accent. Yeah. Well, so Connor, you know how Superman sounds in the actual DC, in the actual like Young Justice Abridged, right? No, I don't watch Young Justice Abridged. He basically, basically, he slowly becomes more and more right wing and xenophobic till he runs for president. <laughs> Holy it's, shit! Yeah, him and Oliver run as president, vice presidential candidates against who? Who is it? Oh, it's Lex and uh, Alfred. <laughs> the fuck is going on in this show <laughs> it's hilarious um but basically alexander reveals that since when, however he traversed he is in being made of both positive and negative matter so he has abilities beyond like that of anybody um so that Modern he is the key yeah and then we cut to again our villain talking to psycho pirate and basically is like oh you need to control barry um so why don't we do this short thing so Ryan can get to read and we get to see the awesomeness of hey, Barry Allen. Hey, Barry Allen. Hey, Barry Allen's freaking out. You gotta keep him under control. It's like, <laughs> sorry, but he's just like freaking out right now. Yeah. 
So um, here, I'll open it. And then, Ryan, you are Barry, you're Flash, and John, they're Psycho Pirate. So, uh, also, damn really him. Nice before you start, Monarch gets a nice little send off into space. Just yes, they, they spock him. Yes, continue. <laughs> damn him. Now I know what he did. But the fool in dying only delayed the inevitable. I'll have those worlds conquer. I'll have those worlds yet, but there are still others to conquer before then. You you still haven't told me what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> <laughs> the last three Earths. <laughs> the last three Earths will be your plaything, Psycho Pirate. But for now, you may play with your with our human guest if you wish. Just do not slay him. At last. Why am I here? What's going on? I want some answers. Sure, Flasher. Sure. See, the world, our world, they're all screwed up now, living in all times at once. And the people are just scared, just like you, Flash. Right, Flasher? Scared out of their wits. What, 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 what are you doing to me? Oh, Lord, please don't hurt me. <laughs> don't hurt me. <laughs> <laughs> You know, why, why, seems, why does that sound seems... like really excited? Like, oh no, don't hurt me! I actually <laughs> like the way you played it, Ryan. It's so <laughs> it sounds very on on point, Barry Allen. Yeah. <laughs> also, he calls oh, him the Flasher, and I feel weird about that. Yes, <laughs> that's why. That's why I put that little that little uh, accent on there. I mean, that's yeah. why Flash can't be within a uh, hundred feet now. So, <laughs> oh, you can never tell. Yeah, it's true. You he can, can never really tell. Yeah, he, he can be within a hundred feet. Before you he's, can even tell, he's the in the fucking classes, dude. Yeah, he's mm -hmm. the flasher. All right, so we get basically there's Lana Lang is doing a TV newscast, and basically we see that the worlds and time periods have merged. So there's uh, dinosaurs in what looks like Metropolis with future tech, as well as like covered wagon and like biplanes and space jets, and we have all of our heroes, and then we have a bunch of heroes in the monitors satellite which there is way too many to kind of go through who is around we have harbinger and pariah and alexander luther kind of at the top but there are yeah, a lot of have, dudes yeah because you can see there's the i think there's only the two supermen here we have old and like old and current regular. two supermen we have wonder woman starfire we have nightwing we have plastic man we have batman and robin Other um, i see people. dr fate in there yeah, there's yeah. Dr. Fate, Swamp there's thing, the Creeper, see, see yeah, there's the Robot Man. Man, there's Beast Boy, Cyborg, the Riddler, which is very there's odd. John, John Stewart, Green Lantern, Martian Manhunter, Disco Nightwing, Black Lightning. Hawk Man and Woman. Uh, uh, dude, we got Doom a lot of trolls in there. Is, is Disco Nightwing there? Because I thought I saw yes. adult he's next to star. He's next to Starfire and Wonder Woman. Uh, that's, okay, so that's, that's very weird, because I feel like I... Oh, okay. I, okay, I see him on the same page now. This must be uh, Jason Todd Robin around this point. Yes, it would be Jason Todd Robin. Okay, because I, I, I think because I Rundy. yes, there's Batman and Robin and Batgirl and Halo, and then there's also Robot Man, the Metal Man, um, Cheetah, the Spectre is there. Uh, D Man's also here. Yeah, Metamorpho, Aquaman. There's I'm not joking. many. It's not D Man, but it's someone with a giant D on his chest. <laughs> with red hair, so I just assumed it was D Man. No, maybe someone snuck in Man Hunter. <laughs> Solomon Grundy. Uh, Solomon Grundy is on page one of the top, the very yeah, top right, and he just has his hand raised in the air, like he's like, I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> Next to him is just some ghost. <laughs> yeah, I am the box ghost. Yeah, there's Parasite is in there. The Phantom Strangers in there. Oh, Parasite, the worst. Superman villain. Yeah, the Haw Hawkman and Woman, Power Girl. Is uh, Superman just holding some Hawk chick? Like some like the name She is from character. the Legion. She's from the Legion. No, I'm like remember. he's just like he's just like holding her like by her yeah, hips. She got, she got injured in one of the previous issues. Is that Jonah uh, Hex next to Black Lightning? Next to Apache Chief and Firestorm? Uh, oh yes. I, I was just Googling. I'm like who is this? I, I'm like, who was that Native American character? It was part of Super Friends. I'm like, a pat. It was like you said it, out, and I like, right as I googled it, it was Apache Chief. Yeah, yeah. E not Chuck, and he just grows like fifty feet. <laughs> mm -hmm. oh, okay. Oh yeah, that is on the DC Universe app. If you want to go watch it, it is awesome. So basically, uh, no, I, I didn't even see uh, Aquaman's right there in Spot thing. Yep. Uh, basically, old, everybody. Old Super 
old, old Superman is just holding that character with the wings. Yeah, from the by Legion. lead. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, um, why are you, why are you holding this girl, Superman? What are you doing? She's got wings. <laughs> like she can't fly. She got, or, yeah, or her she got hurt. She got hurt in one of the earlier issues. Because like in the next page, everyone's freaking out. Harbinger and Pariah are like, "Yo, you guys got to chill. We have stuff to tell you." Chill the fuck and out. Current Superman's like, "Oh, I've heard of this monitor. Um, there's obviously something wrong happening. Uh, I'm gonna listen to Pariah." And everyone else is like, "Shut the hell up." And On the we- next page, uh, you see Apache Chief with his white sidekick with like red hair, and it's like. Holy crap. It's yeah, we get the... like a, a bunch oh, of those characters. Yeah, it's... Also, Penguin shows up for some reason. Yeah, they have like Penguin, Captain Cold, Lex, and Cheetah are there with... I can't remember. The, there's like a bunch... The ones behind them are like all Legion. But basically, Alexander's like, the monitor's dead. Um, I only know some of what happened. Like, what happened? And Harbinger's like, yeah, I killed him. Blah, blah, blah. And they kind of go through everything. Um... Oh. Oh, yeah. comic book mumbo um, wumbo jumbo. Uh, so the people in this is so you have Brother Blood, Penguin, Captain Cold, um, Cheetah. Um, I I forgot this guy character's name. It's like Fa- It's not. It's not Phalanx. Fa- it's like something like that. The, the, he's the a Legion guy. villain. Yeah, he's yeah. a Legion villain. Yeah, and basically they have the explanation of like yeah. So Earth One and Two, like the universes are kind of floating on top of each other and it's kind of like an eclipse and eventually they're going to go to being completely on top of each other and when that happens everybody does validus validus is who i was thinking of um but basically like none of these universes he explains were supposed to be separate where there's only supposed to be one and everyone's like what you're saying is impossible this doesn't make sense and basically then we get the creeper specter and phantom stranger talking which is kind of awesome. And basically everyone's like, what the shit is going on? Which, by the way, you would think like the the left hand of God would uh <laughs> would have yeah. like better. Know what's going on. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And they basically explain it's like, oh, it's not just Earth, it's like everything. And then we cut to Ran, and Ran's like with Adam Strange and it's getting all fucked up and stuff. What page are we and, on? Uh oh. this is now one thirty two. Okay. I'm just like jumping around and then like Pry like, Yeah, you gotta do this. There's like I like the way it works. Like I hear the death. I've like seen the death of so many worlds wherever I go, and then go and then Alexander Luther's like basically go to your worlds, uh, see what's going on, decide quickly. The universe is like we don't have that much time. Um, and then old Superman's basically like, yeah, we'll do this, but like we're probably in for like with you. And then we see like, like again, doubt us, but we'll do it. Uh, I and I kind of love this like Lana Lang segments where she's talking to like. Thomas Jefferson, uh, someone from the future from 2996, and then a caveman who eats her mic. And then we get the Green Lantern's return, which I know we talked about last week. So the, we see the Guardians are some sort of stasis. We, we get the, one of the most controversial Green Lanterns in all of history in this. Is it the uh, dude that looks like a bird? Or like a uh, no, it is the blonde alien girl who's like thirteen and aged herself. Mm, we've talked about her quite a quite a lot. The big yikes character, uh, Aresia. Yeah. Big yikes. Yeah, no, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I'm agreeing. Yeah, and then we get a saber tooth tiger is about to kill Lois Lane. Superman shows up and punches it, and um, this is where we get the two Supermen talking to each other, and. Basically, this is Lois Lane uh, of the current universe, not the old one. No, and I think she's just kind of like, Superman, you're old. And he's like, yeah, no, I'm old, but I'm not from your universe. That guy is. Yeah, it's mostly we get a bunch of pages of like this kind of popping around. And then the Psycho Pirate hold over Killer Frost is released, and everyone's kind of seeing that the world is jacked. Um, Also, cavemen have showed up in um, the Wayne Manor. Which is normal, something. honestly, considering what Grant Morrison does later. They're all old <laughs> Thomas Waynes. R- R- <laughs> They're all descendants of Thomas Wayne. <laughs> They're all Thomas Wayne Juniors and like the second <laughs> ongoing. Yeah, we get Geoforce is fighting dinosaurs, and then we go back to 
Oh yeah, we get the guy from uh, issue two, the caveman who bopped himself in the head after fighting the mammoths. Oh, caveman. Yeah, I can't remember what his name is. He was not Commandi. He's the. It's other. like Alfred or something like that. Yeah, it's something dumb sounding. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Then we cut to the red tornado, psycho pirate flash thing. Um, do we want to read this? Where is this page? I'm sorry. I'm like. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. One thirty-eight. I'm jumping around because a lot of these pages are just like the worlds are shit and they're just like falling apart. Yep, and yes. they're just it's like fan service to be like, look, all your heroes are interacting. Everything's going to hell. Yeah. Um, my daughter, is she here? It's like, oh, it's these other people. Yeah. It's like, uh. Yeah, yeah. we get it. Time's fucked up. Yeah, so basically, um, the red tornado is unleashed, and we basically see that, like, his power is, like, even scaring the shit out of Flash even more. And he, and the, um. I feel like all of this is also just, like, a little, a bit above red tornado's pay grade. Yes. Wolverine Tornado was their attempt to make a character like the Vision, right? I think Vision was first. Vision was first, I believe. Uh, I had a question. Like, isn't Red Tornado, his power set's just like he's a robot with like durability, strength, and like the wind. Like, how does he deal with cosmic scale? Like, um, well, what what is done to him is he basically creates a giant hurricane with his things, with his power. So that's what we see on the next page. Which is where we see Wildcat crippled. And then we have the awesome combination of Zatanna, Zatara, Dr. Fate, and what is the Thund- genie character? Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt. That, yeah, I'm surprised you forgot about Thunderbolt. You know, Thunderbolt. That character that Jeff Jones consistently tries to make to be a thing. Was he <laughs> Doomsday Clock recently? Yeah, I think Johnny Thunder. Uh, there. Three more days to the two year anniversary. <laughs> Wait, it's still we, not done yet. Are are we about to meet the stupidest looking design ever in a comic? Oh, uh, uh, I mean, there, dude, there's a couple in this series. You're gonna have to tell me which one. So yeah, basically they take it out, and Power Girl shows up and stops whatever it is, and Jay Garrick runs over and it's like, "Oh man, that could have been bad. What is it?" And they're like, "Holy shit, it's the Red Tornado. What the hell?" And then basically everyone's standing around Wildcat, and they're like, "Oh shit, he is." Fucked up. And Black Lightning's like, who cares? He's only a robot. And I'm like, really? I'm like, okay. Yeah, but then they're like, all <laughs> ups- they're all upset about Wildcat because his legs are shattered. And I don't know this character that's looking. Is it Monel? It might be. Maybe. And he's just like, he'll never walk again. There's he's been so damage. Is it-, is it bad that when I read like Black Lightning's panel, that is just like super, like, like super 70s exploitation? <laughs> Like super, uh, like black dynamite. Yeah. yeah, no, that's how he's drawn, and it's that era. Uh, Man, who cares? He's only a robot. Which um character were you talking about, John? That's like terrible design. Because if oh. it's Wildcat, I fucking agree. Well, besides him, I'm talking on page one forty five. That um. Oh, okay. okay, we could talk about that. Which we're getting, is that? You're getting there. That's why I was yes. like. We got, we're almost there. Uh, I don't know. Like, I think, like, Wildcat's design... Because, like, Wildcat is, like, a, a Star Spangled... Or not Star... Uh, All-Star... Was it All-Star Squadron character? All-Star like, Squadron and Justice Society. Like, you know, and I feel like Wildcat's design kind of fits within the aesthetic of the rest of the people that are a part of that team. So it's like, ah, uh, it's like an old design, but, you know, it's not bad. No, I would that's... say it's a bad design. I, I shouldn't say that. I should say I don't like the design. I find the the cat face like the weird. It's a weird angle. Where it looks like giant butt cheeks on his face. Yeah, yeah, definitely looks like a uh, brown nosing himself. Yeah. So we there, go there to... have been better versions of that design. Okay, yes. I hope so. Like I like in the Justice League cartoon, he's designed well. Mm, he's okay. in one of the episodes. Yeah. Um, yeah. So basically, he's in, we go back. He's in, He's in, like, one of the most horniest episodes of... Oh, yeah, it's, <laughs> the, of, of it's all the women fight each other. Oh, nice. Yes. Uh, it's, it's, it's the one where uh, Black Canary goes to uh, Oliver for, for help on, with, uh, with Wildcat, and then they have, like, that amazing fight scene uh, of, of Black Canary Ever- and Oliver Queen, and it's just like, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, it's, is it the same episode where... It's like Vixen and Hawkgirl are dealing with their stuff, and that's where they get into like the thing with roulette, 
And basically, then they're like, oh, you think this is all we got? And, like, Wonder Woman shows up, and they're like, oh, shit. Uh, there's, like, two episodes with Roulette, so it could be, like, the first one or the second mm-hmm. one. All right, so uh, we go to back to the satellite, and basically, like, Alexander explains that, like, we have to save all five universes in order to have enough power to stop him. And Dr. Light's like, I don't like this idea. Like, I don't want to be involved. And basically... Alexander's like, if you don't help us, like all the arts will be destroyed. Uh, as the antimatter grows, each universe, um, our universe, like our like he grows, our enemy grows stronger. Prize like I sense disaster. And Harbinger's like, something's happening to the monitor satellite. We basically see the satellite be attacked and it's starting to be destroyed. And then um, why don't we read this thing? So starting with uh, Psycho Pirates lines, John. Uh, sorry, I I just just posting this uh clip into yes, the yeah, I totally got lost too. So it is uh the page where like the where satellite's being monitor. exploded. Yeah, it's like yeah. it's incredible that satellite dis- disintegrated, but I don't see it. You use any weapons? I do not require outside weaponry, psycho pirate. Still, the show merely delay my enemies, not prevent them from resisting me. But that shall come soon enough. They will not be able to stop my forward thrusts. I th- That's what she said. said. <laughs> they said there were only three universes left, but I thought you said something about an apocalypse. What about that? Darkseid and his sycophants shall not escape me, but... You talk big, mister, but I haven't seen you do anything to prove yourself. Your emotion, controlling dupe, can't even hold me down. Why do you keep hiding yourself? What are you afraid? Show yourself. Flash, you are a fool to think you can bait me. I am not motivated by mere emotion. <coughs> I have been busy elsewhere, but if you truly want to see me, I see no reason I should deny you that privilege. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my Gre- god, his nose hair. <laughs> Greetings, Flash. I hope the, anticip- scaly. the anticipation was worth it. Call me the monitor, and I shall soon and very soon I shall rule over all who live. Maybe. His, his stupid little teeth, I love it. Well, th- those aren't his teeth. That's like his skin. Yeah, it's just so scaly. Dude needs to yeah. use some moisturizer. And it's like a helmet, I believe. Like, it's a whole setup. Yeah, it, it looks, looks like, like he has, looks like he has a mustache. Tubes. Yeah, they're like breathing tubes, but it also looks like a mustache. Yeah, it's it does. fucking fat hookah. It's, it's weird, because then when we eventually get to it, when he changes into his, like, second form, I actually like this form better than the second form. I think the second form is even is dumber looking. Uh, I'm trying to remember what page we like get to see that. Oh, I passed it. It's already changed. Because the second form, which is like what ends up happening in uh, Infinite Crisis, like that costume that we ended up seeing that Superboy takes on, that's what we get later on. Um, where he has like the giant, like doofy bullet head. Oh, I think. Right. Because right. I think that they're, like, energy beings, and this is kind of just, like, a housing for them. I don't know. But those tubes definitely, like, go into his mouth. He's very, like, apocalypse-looking-ish. All right. Um, yeah, basically, we see, like, Earth-X is... Um, we get a glimpse of that, and we're seeing it start to be destroyed, and the end of the Freedom Fighters. Uh, can I also just say that, like, I feel like every couple of years, DC Comics tries to make the Freedom Fighters into a thing, and can can we not? It but, worked on the TV show, like the way they did it, but they only used the Ray. Really, they didn't use any of the other characters. I, I I feel like all of them are kind of bad. Um, most of them I don't like. Condor and was it like Atomic? Was it like Atomic Man or something? The human Bomb. Human bomb, and then what is the woman's name in the Phantom most Lady. over-sexualized costume of all time? Uh, Phantom Lady. Yeah, and then Uncle Sam is kind of goofy. Uncle Sam is very goofy. He's nothing but ham. Yeah, but like, I like the Ray. Like, I like the Ray. I like his power set. I like a concept of his character. I think, which I is think why that... he's the only one that has been used since. Yeah, I think that's the thing, is that they keep on trying to make the Ray happen, and I'm just like, it's it's fetch. The Ray ain't gonna happen. <laughs> Alright, so then we start on issue six, which is to kind of um, 
I see. So basically, it's the anti monitor and psycho pirate talking. Flash is regaining his abilities, and um, anti monitor powers up psycho pirate. Um, and so we see three Earths in psycho pirate's eyes. He increases his ability. We cut to the heroes. They have survived, but everything is all fucked up in the satellite. <laughs> Shit's going everywhere. Everything's sideways. Yeah, Alexander goes people, to see what is seeing, go- people seeing worlds in their eyes. It's going nuts. Yeah, um, Alexander goes to do stuff, and Harbinger's trying to help him, but she takes him out and replaces him, and uses her ability to split herself and like use her powers to hold um, like the u- those universes together, I guess. And then we see. Um, this is kind of the end in the uh, Wildcat and the beginning of the new one, who has kind of been in and out of continuity for years. We said Harbinger is just dead and destroyed, right? Um, yeah. I guess she is. Like, yeah, the satellite's destroyed and she flew in to, like, save everybody. Mm-hmm. She goes to her mechanical womb, is yes. what they refer to it as. Then we get the side plot that I have, I really don't like, actually. Which is the Brainiac Luther thing? No, I mean, this plot. I don't like it. Yeah, I like, I like Brainiac ship. By the way, oh, this well, the skull ship is awesome. It's always awesome. The design is awesome. The plot's stupid. He just takes them because he wants them. I, I, mm-hmm. That's as that's as far as I can tell. Yep. Yeah. And um, so basically, the world is going crazy. Everyone's freaking the fuck out. Everyone's fighting each other. We have the Freedom Fighters beating the crap out of. Uh, the Teen Titans and some of the Justice Society people. Yeah, and then you have like Katano fighting Judo Master. Yeah, Starfire's <laughs> fighting Black <laughs> Condor. Who, who like fool? <laughs> Judo Master and Katana are fighting, and Judo Master's like, uh, he's he's like, just stand there, lady, and it'll be Sayonara. You're not going to kill any American if I can help it. And he's like, uh, he's like. He like and that's his name is like I'm the judo master and I fight alongside the allies, not Nazi filth like you. And I'm like, come on, guy. And I understand it's like time displaced, but I'm like, uh, come on. Yeah. So basically, everything is going wrong, and they're like, what is happening? So I would definitely like John to read at least this one little part where it cuts to the antimatter universe for Psycho Pirate. Uh. So I'll say the antimatter universe. What page are you on? 158. Uh, 158. Uh, it is where we have Dr. Light is blasting oh, at the top. Oh, Harbinger is, it's like the, it's like Harbinger is like. The ghost thing? Yeah. Yeah. And he's like, oh, my power okay. is focused. Monitor, I was controlling all their emotions. You no know, billions of souls crying out at once. No! Like, like, uh, like, uh, like, uh, Darth Vader coming off the thing. <laughs> It's like no, that that's psycho pirate right now. Yes, and, ba- and anti monitor basically goes nonsense, psycho pirate. You wanted a world to control. Now you have three. Mwahaha. Um. So yeah, we see we see more destruction and stuff like that. Blue Beetle and Captain Adam in his old school costume, which looks really goddamn dumb. Um. Which is nothing to be compared to Peacemaker with. I don't even know what's going on. Yeah. Then we get the fight, Wait. like you were talking about with Judo Wait. Master. Wait, whose com- whose costume is very? Oh, I think Peacemaker? I like. Skip- oh, I think I like skipped ahead like oh, quite a ways. Sorry about that. Yeah, no, no it's fine. Um, basically, yeah, like we have Peacemaker, the Judo Master fight you were talking about. Um, Dolphin, who I didn't realize is a character who they've again. That's another one they've tried to bring back recently, both in the comics and in Young Justice. Uh, you know, I kind of I kind of like Dolphin, but like I. I I don't think she, I don't want to spoil it, but I don't think she survives crisis. Um, I don't think so. Um, I love that the question is with Blue Beetle. It's like trouble is I can't stop myself. Question's <laughs> response: Neither can I, Beetle. Some terror is gripping us, forcing us on, not only to refuse to believe those trying to save us, but to kill ourselves as well. I just love like that the question is in this, and he's just like the. the I know everything. <laughs> don't ask. Yes. And we have Supergirl battling, uh, well, at this point, it's Captain Marvel or Shazam. Some lady builds a crystal barrier to, like, stop the stuff. And we get, like, Ghost Harbinger kind of dealing with stuff. And then 
the sh- the Captain Marvel family is battling Wonder Woman and Wonder Woman or Supergirl. Uh, Captain Marvel's battling Supergirl. Wonder Woman's battling Mary, and Black Canary is fighting. I don't remember the old man. Black Canary's fucking costume. My God. Oh yeah, she looks like Sonya Blade. Yes, like, <laughs> in blue yes. and not green. And then we get uh, Uncle Sam punches Commander Steel in the face. And then we get like the awesome. I think this like is more like the awesome looking thing of like Harbinger kind of bringing all the worlds into her. You know, uh, they there's a lot like Doctor Manhattan, which is pr- pretty sure why they did like the Doomsday Clock off of it with that uh, yeah. that panel of Harbinger just all blue. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. Well, um, Watchmen comes out what like a year after this is finished. It's like eighty seven, oh. I think. Okay, yeah. Uh, let me see. Yeah, basically, like, Harbinger's, like, doing all this stuff, and basically it reveals, like, Lila basically burns herself out, saving the remaining universes. Um, they're all connected. And oh, the no, five... Uh, the same year as, uh... Yeah, yeah it came out the same year. Yeah, Watchmen comes out, like... During this? April, May, June, July, August. So September. six months later. Yeah, because I knew that this was... Pl- like, because it was originally supposed to be... I think we talked about last time, like, Watchmen was supposed to be the Charlton characters, but they told him no because they were using them all in the book. Um, but yeah, basically the worlds are merged. Uh, they're, they're starting to merge. Lila and Alexander are on, like, some rock, and they're breathing in space. And they're like, it's safe for the moment. All the heroes are kind of gathering. And then we kind of end with the new Wildcat seeing the old Wildcat and being like, there is now a new Wildcat on the prowl. I'm Yolanda Montez. I'm the new Wildcat. Yep. What a weird way to end this giant uh, event comic. Where like the introduction of that character. Yeah. And now I'm here with the weird costume. Because it's like, I mean, you know, not to give a like, not to downplay like, you know, the new Wildcat. But at the same time, it's like if Batman ain't doing shit in this comic, it's like, why would I assume? Well, that's like the funniest part of this book is like. Batman's like he's in like images, but he doesn't do anything in this story. Yeah. He just hangs out with Neanderthals. Well, it's not really much detecting when the whole universe is like being destroyed. Well, I mean, that was the same Lila, for like metal, but he still gave Lila, a shit. Lila and Luther on this rock. I don't know why, but if anyone the uh, Dragon Ball Z movies at the very end of like Android thirteen, where it's like when the fish jumps, it's over, and then that's what this whole scene remi- that whole image reminds me of. <laughs> I have not seen that movie in so long. So. No, it was like v- Vegeta and Piccolo were like sitting back to back, and they're like, "Is it over?" Not until the fist jumps. Fist jumps. It's over. I don't know why, but that image of Lila and Luther like this just reminds me of that. and I'm laughing about it. Yeah, I, I saw that. Uh, yeah, that was like the that was like the ending of and- Super Android uh, 13, and it's just yes. Vegeta and Piccolo just like hanging out on some ice. Mm-hmm. Just so let's say, like these three issues are. It's a lot of like seeing the destruction so like the first three it was like the setup to everything and showing the scale these three is like all right we off the monitor uh and then we get the creation of dr light and then we just see like the chaos and how truly powerful the anti-monitor is it's also a lot of fan service it is it's just so much of like seeing every goddamn character in existence yes and i think that's my problem because i know like seven DC heroes, and there are 50,000. Yeah. It isn't until, like, the next issue where we kind of, we slum down our team of heroes, and then we actually start to get an idea of what happened, which I do find it hilarious that, like, there's kind of one constant of the um, origins of the DC universe, and it still sticks in here with um, Krona. And then we get, it's like basically like all the stuff is a lot about the Guardians and like why they were taken out of. And we get a lot of backstory. So if you don't know much about the Green Lanterns, you will learn it in the next issue. And then we get the origins of... That's me. Yep, Pariah. It's basically an origin story for all the characters. So we get um, how the universe was created, Pariah's like role in everything, the origin of the Monitor, and the origin of Harbinger. And then, yeah, we get kind of like our main team put together, and then they're preparing for their assault on the Anti Monitor's stronghold. Which the next issue is like, God damn, it's really fucking long. 
But the next issue is like one of the most famous issues in comics of all time, especially the cover, which yeah. it's the famous Superman holding um, Supergirl cover. Yeah, well, it's funny because like, what does the cover say? Like, uh, like a double size issue and a shocking reveal, or like whatever. And it's like, oh god, I wonder what the shocking reveal is. Well, I believe originally there were two covers. And I think it's there's the him it's old Superman holding Wonder Woman and young Superman holding Supergirl. If I remember correctly. Because I do believe that there's like two different ones. I think so. Uh, I'm not sure myself. But yeah, so we have that. And then the second one, if I remember correctly, is the Flash the famous Flash episode or issue, I should say. And then the third one is um, the culmination of this side plot that we see get kicked off here. So, yeah. Okay, well, time. I'm excited to see where this goes. Uh, yeah. It's it, For me, it started off very rough. I pretty much read the last six issues yesterday and today, and getting into issue one and two was pretty tough, but it definitely picks up in the yeah. uh It's like... These ones that were we read today were like it's the craziness. It's like this is it's showing like the level of kind of the Armageddon that's going on. Mm-hmm. I think it's like fine. Yeah. Well, the I thing is, it's, it's, I, remember, I, think, like, I think I think like also like it doesn't help that like was like we're six issues in and it's just like it's, in the last couple of issues like here's a new Doctor Light, here's a new Wildcat, here's like these new characters, and it feels like by the end of issue six, it's like man, there seems to be like a lot of plot threads uh, being kind of juggled about, and I'm kind of wondering how many of these things kind of get resolved by the end of it, and how many of them are just like continue to read like whoever's adventures within Infinity Inc. Yeah, well, from what I remember hearing as like most of the tie-in stuff was not very important to the main story, which is why it's not any in really much of the collected editions. The only character that like has really no introduction except because if you read like just the main books is Superboy, like that specific Superboy, but it's more like this is like kind this is the first book that does the thing. Oh, yeah, because I'm looking now, like, the copy of My Infinite Crisis has, like, uh, the Alex Ross kind of design, like, the Superman, the two Superman with Wonder Woman and Lo- and um, Supergirl. Mm. But yeah, like, this is kind of the first of these giant crossovers that ever existed. So I do think it kind of, it has the problems of being, like, the first. So it's very big. It's, like, it's way too big. Like, it's there's way too many characters and I think that is why we get like like we blew through like the issue five and six because there's just like a lot of it's just like fan service where we see like a shit ton of characters and a whole bunch of fights that really don't matter Mm -hmm. but it definitely picks up like the next ones we're reading are like the two of the most iconic ones um, issues in like comic history I would say because of what happens but yeah again we get I forgot, we get, like, another legacy character change in this as well. Do we? Who's that? Yeah, this is where we all get the Wally West Flash. Oh, shit! Oh, man, I remember that guy. Yeah, that guy. You remember that guy murdered a bunch of people? Shh! We don't talk about that. And himself? But not him. He didn't commit suicide. He murdered a version of himself. Someone died somewhere. But yeah, like, I don't know. Like, I, I do... I like the story, and as we go on, I think it's, like, it's kind of, like, a good history note to, like, think about, like, this is why many of the giant crossovers are the way they are, especially ones that are cosmic-level stuff that I think both big two companies, like, take a lot from. Um, Um, because, yeah, I'm looking at it right now, and, like, I would say, like, the biggest kind of event comic, like, prior to Crisis would be, um, the Kree Scroll War in 1970 one to 72 and then you know like thanos war also happened in 73 to 74 but oh uh contest of champions is like a like a, a limited series in 82 but yeah like not not really on the scale of uh of this yeah, yeah. this this seems like a, a first for dc because it, it seems a little like messy 
Is there mm-hmm. a way yes, to say that it? Good, that good Alex Ross art. Yes, yeah, right Alex Ross is gorgeous. Um, and then, yeah, it's definitely messy and it's like too big and too busy. And but I think like I'm trying to think of the other big what like crossovers Marvel had after this, like Secret Wars is kind of has some of the same issues where it's like it's there's too much goddamn shit going on that's like, oh, and Spider Man has a new costume now. Uh yeah, okay, great. And stuff thanks. like that. So like I think it's just like a thing at the time and as we've gone like through and through and like seeing other crossovers like what we did when we covered House of X and Powers of X, like that book is way slimmed down. There's what like really only like seven ish characters that are kind of main characters in it. It's really only like four. And then there's like a handful of like kind of side characters. And I think you could go to like even like Civil War and stuff like that, where it's really only like a core like ten characters at most. So I don't know. Um it'll be interesting to see what they do. Like I think like most of what we covered this week is gonna be cut out of the shows except for um like how the monitor dies and um yeah I think like most of the other stuff like I think we'll get all the psycho pirate stuff because they already teased that. Uh so I was thinking like man like when do like the X Men crossovers start happening and like the first big one um is Mutant Massacre and that comes out like six months after the end of Crisis and I'm like wow. oh man I, I was like man I'd actually rather read Mutant Massacre <laughs> than Crisis. <laughs> Well, X Men back in the eighties was pretty goddamn good. Uh, I, I mean, Crisis was like, or Mutant Massacre was like the first big Claremont uh, X Men event, and then it's like you, it's like followed by like Fall of the Mutants, and then Inferno, and the Extinction Agenda, and the Mere Island Saga, and you're like, bangers. Yeah, those are bangers. all fucking awesome. Oh, I would not mind popping back over to Marvel after this is over and checking that stuff out. So. Yeah, well, it's like at this point, like, do we want to read like a a bad event like Civil War? <laughs> uh, Civil yeah, War Two. I was gonna say Civil War Two. I've uh, never read Civil hey, War Two. I have not either. It's like here's you're not thing. missing much. Here's the thing: both Civil Wars are really bad. I haven't read the first <laughs> one in a long time, so you are probably right. Yeah. So, um. I don't know. Does anybody have anything else they want to talk about, or we can close out the show because we're close it out. Yeah, I'm let's probably close, close it out. out. I'm All ready right. to fall asleep. Yes. Does anybody have any plugs? Um, I'm not uh, doing yeah, anything yeah. new, but you can always find me on Instagram at maybe Connor and on Twitter at uh, not Connor. Uh, I do jokes there, and sometimes I post things that I'm doing. Yeah, I'm on. I'm on Twitter, Jam Scott one nine three and. That's all I got to promote. Sweet. Uh, Short and you simple. Can, you can find me on Twitter at John, J-O-H-N underscore F-N underscore Siler, S-E-I-L-E-R. On Twitter and Instagram, where I talk about uh, that I placed uh, 64th place in a 450-some-odd Pokemon regional tournament this weekend. Congrats. I saw uh, that. Very nice. You can oh, also wait, hear me talk about please, Pokemon Sword Shield. Uh, I play. I got sixty fourth place out of uh four hundred fifty eight players. Oh nice. shit! Congrats. Yeah, and so you could probably also follow me on Twitter. Where I'll probably be talking about Sword and Shield this weekend because I'm, despite the discourse, I'm very excited for the game. I'm glad. I'm glad someone's got some nice things to say about it. Because I mean, like I thought, I thought uh, like Sword and Shield. I think is the best Pokemon game so far. And the anime for certain uh, for uh, Sun and Moon was also just very good, and mm-hmm. um, I don't know. I f- I feel like comparing people are like, oh, like Pokemon. It's like it doesn't look like a, a Zelda game or a Mario game. I'm like, well, it's not never supposed to be. Yeah, and I feel I'm like excited expect- for it because this is the first Pokemon game I'm going to own since like Emerald. Is that the green one on like Game Boy? Yes. Yeah. 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 So I don't know. I'm excited for them. I would love to hear what you have to say. Um, don't forget to check out all of the other shows. Uh, we talked about what should be coming out soon. Uh, me and the other guys, we talked about uh, kind of comic book news and what the Watchmen TV show, which I'm really digging. And then you have 3 a.m. files and Smallville Chronicles. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe and hit up all your friends.
And um, yeah, we will catch you guys next time. Uh, uh, I love you. Gotta catch them all. Gotta catch them all. Gotta catch them all, Pokemon. <laughs> I'm Barry. <laughs> I was going to say, imagine if they did a crisis on infinite Pokemon. Mm -hmm. like, you have uh, it's fifty different ashes. Only one's a winner. Mm -hmm. well, it's all though. It's all the, the age. It's all the main uh -huh. characters from all the games. So like red and blue and ash and all that stuff. Yeah. Are there, is the recording still going? Yeah. Yes, totally. I, have, I don't know. <laughs> Welcome to the Phantom Zone. And now, thanks.